Alright, hey guys, what's up? A-Pipe Brian here, and uh, sorry I'm coming out a little bit late with my flea market and thrift store pickups for January, but um, February was kind of a short month, because you know, I like to usually do them the following month, and just been kind of busy with a lot of things, so sorry this came out late. I'll have February's out on time this month, uh, as long as everything goes as planned. Um, but without any further ado, I got a really big haul, as you guys know, as I alluded to last month. Uh, so let's get right into it and show you some of the cool stuff that I found uh, for the month of January. Uh, so we'll start with probably the smallest category first. Um, anything that I couldn't find at the moment to include in my pickup video, I'll show pictures of. Uh, you'll understand at the end because there was uh, one haul that was just really too big, so I'm just showing some highlights of stuff that I got. Um, so I'm just going to show one of my smaller categories, and that would be video games. Um, this I picked up for, uh, I think, 30 bucks. Um, and this is a really cool multi-cart that I got for my Super Nintendo. It has 110 games in one on it. And, um, well, I do have a big Super Nintendo collection, and I also did pick up a uh, Super Mario Kart and another SNES game that I can't remember. I think Final Fight, maybe, I don't remember, uh, for like 10 bucks each, which were cheap. Um, this is great, because this has a lot of really expensive games, too, that I really can't afford, and it's just an easy solution to just still want to play on my Super Nintendo without having to dig through a drawer full of carts all the time, so... This was a really cool um, pickup, so, you know, it's not retro or vintage or anything, but it's just cool and it serves a purpose, and I'm glad I got that. Uh, one of my cooler finds of the month, um, so I did pick up some Game Boy games and stuff, and like I said, I will show pictures of them at the end so you guys can see what I missed. It was nothing really huge, so these were my better game pickups. Uh, for the Atari 2600, I found Ghostbusters. And this is a pretty rare game, actually. I think I paid 5 for that, which is a really good deal. It goes for, uh, I think, like 10 or 20 And just pretty cool with the logo on it and stuff, too. And while these aren't really video games, I guess, per se, I mean, they are, but they aren't, um, I found an old, I think this is from 1982 or 86, a uh, Radio Shack little handheld plane and tank game. I hope you guys can see that. Uh, I think I tested this. I don't remember if I had the batteries or not. No, I still got to clean it, but it looks like it should work. And I love old Radio Shack toys because I got a lot of them for Christmas, so they have a special place in my heart. So anytime I see them, I like to pick them up. Um, and that couldn't have been more than a couple bucks. That was really cheap. And then also, let's see, I picked this up. Uh, hmm. I can't remember how much I paid for this. I think I paid, I want to say 15. I think I paid 15 for this. And this goes for around 40 to 60. Um, this is an Entex Stargate uh, mini arcade. And I love these just because they're so cool because, you know, they're like a little small arcade cabinet. And, um, you know, that's actually Stargate was one of the other names for Defender 2. So that gives this a little bit more value. And um, it does work. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but yeah, there we go, it's turned on. Let's see where the start button is. I think fire is the start button. Oh, there we go. And I don't know if you'll be able to see anything or not, but you can hear the sound effects at least. And you move your ship up and down, shooting other alien ships and stuff, and uh, it's just, just really cool. So I just really like the look of that and everything, really neat. Alrighty, uh, I guess I'll do some other miscellaneous finds. I don't really have much as miscellaneous, but one thing that falls into that category would be this. Uh, I think I picked this up for a buck, and it's a little golden book um, of The Secret of Nim, which I hope a lot of you guys are aware of that movie. It's a great cult classic. Uh, Mrs. Brisby and the Magic Stone. And it's basically a retelling of the movie, but in a little golden book form, and the art is really good. I think I'll show you some of the better pictures here. Yeah, you have like these two here, where like the rats are trying to move her uh, cinder block home. And you can see all the rain and the mud. 
splashing around. Some really good drawing, really nice action scenes. Uh, this was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. So really cool to see a, to see a book of this. It's really neat. That's, that's very unusual. So I don't know if this is worth anything or not, but it, it, it might be because it, you don't usually see a lot of like weird, very specific cult um, classic made after movies like Golden Books like that. So that's kind of neat. Um, also in the same vein, I found this uh, Choose Your Own Adventure book set. Um, this was only two bucks, which is a fantastic deal, and it comes with five Choose Your Own Adventure books. So you, you guys know I'm a big fan of Choose Your Own Adventure. So I've never seen anything like this, like in a box set. I guess you would have got this from Scholastic. And the books that it has in here are, you got the brilliant Dr. Wogan or Wogan, Wogan, Wogan. Uh, Space Vampire, that's pretty neat. Uh, Invaders of the Planet Earth. Rock and Roll Mystery, which that really couldn't get more 80s if it tried, could it? <laughs> and Secret of the Sun God, very cool. So. I love Choose Your Own Adventure. My eyes practically popped out of my head when I saw this because I was like, wow, that's just really, I mean, where are you going to find a box set of that? I mean, let alone just finding the book. So, really cool. Uh, that pretty much does it for miscellaneous, so let's just move right into toys. Um, I picked up a huge lot at a uh, local thrift store of the, uh, the Payo Smurfs. If you guys don't know, that's what... They were originally called when they were made in, um, I think, either Mexico or Portugal or Spain. Uh, but that's the last name of the artist that um, drew and designed the, uh, the Smurfs. Pretty much came up with the idea, I believe. Um, so a lot of the originals are known, but known as Peo Smurfs because they're from the uh, 70s and the 80s. Um, and just some of the cooler ones I got here. So I got about 10 or 20 of them. You got Papa Smurf and like a little captain, sea captain outfit, which is that's just strange. I don't remember him doing that, but I guess at one point he was on a ship. Got a little Smurf on an old timey telephone. And ah, oh, since we're in March, perfect for St. Patty's Day, you got a little Irish Smurf with a shillelagh cane and a four leaf clover. That's really neat. Uh, you got Smurfette here on roller skates. And you got this other Smurf here. I don't know if he has like flowers or french fries. I don't know what he's holding. It looks like food, I guess. Looks like he's got some fries there. It's kind of neat. Uh, another Smurfette. I think this one might go to the board game because of the base. I think this goes to like a game or a different type of set. Uh, you got this little flying Smurf. I've got a couple of doubles of him. I've had him so many times I can't even count. You always see him in bins for some reason. Very, very common. Uh, this neat magician Smurf. Pulling uh, handkerchiefs out of a hat. Now, this one's probably my favorite out of the bunch. You have like this scuba diving Smurf and like snorkel gear, like treasure hunting and deep sea diving. That's wild. So that kind of goes with the Papa Smurf and with the uh, Sea Captain, I guess. Then you got this neat little cowboy Smurf here. With his lasso and 10 gallon hat. And another uh, Smurf from the Magician theme, but this would be like a Lion Tamer uh, Smurf. He's got like the chair or like a drum. Looks like, yeah, like a stool and he's got the, uh, the whip. So that's really neat. Imagine that, Smurfs being able to tame lions. That's very disproportionate, like, to their size. Uh, let's see. Also some other stuff. Um, I picked up some more Corgi Juniors. As you guys know, I love them, so I had them growing up as a kid. Uh, we got one with Yogi Bear in the little uh, Jellystone Park um, little Jeep there. Park Ranger Jeep. Very cool. And then also a very, very rare um, Corgi Jr. This is a Barney Rubble. I have a Fred Flintstone. Uh, but you don't see these 
really ever. Uh, they're late 70s, early 80s. And the Flintstone ones are worth worth a good deal. He's probably worth about 20 bucks. I think I paid about five for them. So really cool. Uh, let's see. Other stuff that I found. Well, you guys just saw a video of these. I found these uh, Robotech Bat Lloyds, as you guys just saw in my last video. So you know all about them. I think I paid like two or three bucks for all three of them. Very cool. And I found a couple of Transformers things this month. Not too much. Uh, I found a couple of MicroMasters. Got this little guy here. It's like a little police car, I believe it says on the side there. And I like collecting the MicroMasters because they're cheap. And there's a lot of them to collect. They're very varied. Plus, you can combine them into like different sets where they can form bigger combiners and stuff. So they're really cool. And then this little purple and black kind of mini Skywarp, I guess you could call it. Little jet airplane. And I also picked up Wheelie. I got this from a good friend of mine, Scott. I uh, play with this toys in New Jersey. And I think I picked this up for like seven bucks, and he's even got the little, the little face mask thing that comes down, the windshield. So that's a good price because usually he's missing that more often than not. And in the same vein as Transformers, I guess we'll kind of stay in that vein. Um, this also I got from uh, from the Play with This store from my friend Scott, um, and this is the Lion Force Rubber uh, Voltron. So as you guys know, I love Voltron. He's missing a sword and shield, but still, he was, uh, and he's missing the wings on the back. But still, he looks good just as a standalone figure. And I think he was like eight bucks or seven bucks. He was pretty cheap, so very cool to add another Voltron figure to my collection. Um, and I also picked up this Exo Squad uh, mech, which I don't know which one it is. It's one of the later ones. I believe it's a bit more uncommon. So if anybody knows who that goes to, I mean, I looked it up, but I just don't remember at the moment. Um, and he has like, this little action feature here where the axe goes down. So it kind of looks like a fire and rescue type mech. And I believe I paid seven or five for that. No more than like seven bucks. Um, this is cool too. I only paid a dollar for him. Now, right off the bat, I will say this isn't his original guitar. I just printed it out so that way it looks cool. Um... This is Bill? Wait a minute. Yeah, I think this is Bill. I always get them confused. Um, but from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, the Kenner line, and from the movie. So, yeah, really cool. He's missing the guitar, um, but he squeezes his legs, and he has, like, a little guitar playing action and stuff. Just really, really cool. So I just kind of printed that out just so he didn't... He looks a little bit better having his guitar, and hopefully I can find his accessory one day. Um, and then for five bucks, I found this guy. As you guys know, I'm not a big G.I. Joe fan, but for five bucks, I can't pass on this because he's worth in the 20 to $30 range. This is uh, a complete play school gun, uh, gun, yeah, gun ho. I always have a hard time saying that. He's got his, uh, gun and his backpack, and I got his ID card, although I don't have that here at the moment. So I know he's a little bit harder to find, so that's cool. Five bucks, I'm not going to pass on that. Uh, for two bucks, I also found a Mego Planet of the Apes uh, figure, which is really neat. Unfortunately, the bottom boot did kind of crack and shatter, so I'm trying to find a replacement for that. But uh, still, overall, I mean, in good shape, as long as I can replace that boot, that's that's really, really cheap for an authentic Mego figure, so very happy about that. Um, I also picked up uh, Major Disaster from Toxic Crusaders. He was only, I think, a buck or two. Very cool. I love Toxic Crusaders. I love all the colors and the designs. They just look absolutely amazing. And then for my TMNT stuff, I also uh, found for like 50 cents or something, uh, Muckman's Gun. So I needed that. Let's see, uh, I also picked up, I think, 20 bucks for the lot, and there's two doubles that I'm not showing here. 
Um, these are the original Dungeons and Dragons um, hard resin PVC plastic figures. So you have this really cool Minotaur. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a video on these soon. And then you got like this knight with like the morning star or the mace or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you got an archer or a longbowman, I guess I should say. Then you have like this evil wizard it's using like an ankh and like some magical herb to like cast a curse. On the heroes and then here we got two of the uh, skeleton guards I'm gonna say skeleton warriors don't want to confuse it with that toy line you got that guy here and I have one extra of each of these but I just wanted to show the ones there's no point in showing the same thing twice and then you got the pikemen there so these are just really cool they display really nice and look really good um, also an odd find I think I paid a uh, Two dollars for him, I want to say. I don't know more than four dollars. Between two and four, I can't remember. Uh, but this is a Remco Sergeant Rock figure. Now, these guys are very, very uncommon. He doesn't have any accessories, but uh, still unusual to see. And that was one of my favorite comic books to read when I was growing up as a kid. So that was cool to pick him up. Uh, also, I should have mentioned before with my video games for... Now, he was a little pricey. I think he was ten. But these are rare, so I didn't mind paying uh, that for them. Uh, again, from my friend Scott at his store. And this is a Donkey Kong Jr. PVC figure. And try to get that nice and close so you can see it. That looks really cool. As you guys know, I'm a huge Atari fan, so I think I've got almost the entire set of those PVCs now. Um, now this was in my big lot that I found, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. Um, this is a uh, Knight Rider Turbo 2000 booster. And what this does is it was sold originally with the uh, car, which is made by Ertl, I believe. I believe. Hmm, can't really make it out, so I'm not sure. I think it's made by Ertl. Um, but anyway, uh, this is what would give Kit kind of like his turbo boost, and what you would do, well I can't do it because I'll go flying off in my room, but you would load the car in here and then push it forward, and then the car would shoot out of there, kind of like Kit getting up to speed, so that's, that's really neat. And you don't see a lot of Knight Rider toys, so I mean, it, it's not really worth much, but it's just, it's interesting, I think it's cool. Um... And also from that big lot that I told you guys about last month, you might remember my video as well. These were some of the uh, Ertl Batman diecast toys that I found, which are really cool looking. Very nice. You got the Batmobile, of course, and the diecast Batman. And he has a good amount of weight to him. I mean, he's probably like a, almost like a quarter pound, I would have to guess. Um, and then I also found this. I don't remember what I paid for him. I think like maybe four bucks or something or two bucks. I don't remember even where I got them from really. Uh, but this is the uh, late 80s DC Comics, the 12 inch line of figures that they did. And we got Robin here with his cape. So I think the only one I'm missing now is the Flash. I pretty much have the whole set. Really cool. All right, so moving on as, uh, oh wait, I'm sorry, I forgot two more things before I get ahead of myself here. Um, some other little random figures I found as well. Um, from the Peter Pan and the Pirates series of action figures, we got Peter Pan there. And he was like two bucks, I believe. And from the Mortal Kombat line of action figures, I have Goro. He's missing his hair on the top, but still a pretty rare figure. If he had the hair, he'd be like 30 bucks for this guy. They're really, really uh, uncommon, which is kind of surprising. All right, so now let me get into um, a lot of the stuff that I found. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, I have, I have a couple other things that I guess um, aren't really that impressive, so I'll show them real quick. 
So that way I don't have a weird segue. Uh, I found this little board game called uh, Ready, Set, Spaghetti, which I just thought was silly. I think I paid like two bucks for that. Pretty neat. All right. And then like I was saying a second ago, let me show uh, just the highlights from my big haul that I found last uh, last month. Well, actually, no, sorry, two months ago now in January. Um, and what I found was this huge, huge, huge tub. I'll post pictures of it so you guys can see of toys, uh, TMT, Ghostbusters, some of it I've already traded um, with people already, but you guys can see what I picked up anyway. Um, and for only 20 bucks, it was like this 30 pound tub, just like a bottomless uh, tub of toys. And uh, I'll show you guys what I what I got in there, or at least the highlights of what I got. Uh, so one of the neat highlights I got here, which I'm eventually gonna do a video on these too, uh, this really neat Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, it's called Sewer Ball. Uh, this is a Waterfalls game, which were made by Tomy. And what you would do is you push the buttons on the bottom and you fill this up with water. And then you try to uh, get your little basketball into the hoops like that. And yeah, just really neat because it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I think that's kind of neat. Uh, one of my very favorite things I found because I got a lot of Ghostbusters stuff. Um, I found this Ghostbusters. This was like a Play-Doh set. So you got the Ecto-1 here. Unfortunately, one of the wheels, I think, is broken off. So hopefully I can find a replacement for that. It's, it's missing a couple of pieces, but still a pretty uncommon toy. And uh, you have on the top here molds where you can make like Egon and Bray. Then the top opens up where you can also cast the other two Ghostbusters. And then you have this other little mold where you can make Slimer, which is really cool. And then you have the little ghost trap where you could put the, put the Play-Doh in and then squeeze out the shape of the Ghostbuster ghost on all four sides, which is really neat. So this is just really cool, I think. Just a really cool little set. Oh, I didn't even notice this on the bottom, actually. There's a little press as well where you can make the little proton packs. How cool is that? So just with the logo and everything on that, that's just really neat. That came in the set. I um, also got a complete uh, glow-in-the-dark ray. Which this figure is apparently very, very rare. It's got his proton pack, and I think these go with it. I'm not sure. If anybody can help me out in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. There's these different face masks, and they look like they should go with it because they're the same color. So I'm not sure, but I got three of those that also came with it. That's very cool. And then, of course, this you guys saw just about a month ago. This really neat Ghostbusters gumball machine, which I thought was super cool. Just one of those weird toys that's kind of, you know, fall between the cracks. That Who's ever going to see that again? It's just, it's obscure. It's strange. It's neat. And let's see, more Ghostbusters stuff. Uh, I got an armband that goes with the... Uh, the role play set, so I didn't have that before for like the, the proton pack and everything that they made. Um, and then this, which is also really cool, I think this was the top to a champ, uh, like a shampoo bottle, and you got Slimer. How cool is that? That's really neat looking. Really like that a lot. Very, very neat, very unusual. And then I had one of these before, and I didn't know what it was until thanks to. Um, Odd Pod's channel, I was watching um, one of his reviews, and he just happened to be reviewing this, and this is um, a Slimer with his Proton Pack, and what this was is you would put the uh, Ghostbuster Slime in there, and then you'd push down on this, and it would come out of his mouth, and uh, yeah, really, really cool little play set. So he's got his Proton Pack and everything, that was also in there, really neat. All right, 
And I guess that is now going to bring me to my pickups of the month. Um, now, one of the most interesting things that I found, which I think uh, was really cool, is this uh, Mario and Luigi, um, kind of weird, shower head. Isn't this thing wild? I picked this up at a flea market that I go to a lot, and it was just the craziest thing. I've never seen anything like this before. So, you know, you can uh, hook it up, and yeah. It's, it's a shower head. I don't know. Like, I'm still stunned that this is a thing. Like, it, it's just, it's, it's very strange, but very cool, because it's Nintendo, so I had to pick it up. But, uh, yeah, really, really crazy. How, how, how wild is that? Um, oh, before I forget with my finds of the month, geez, well, almost forgot to sneak this little guy in with my, uh, he's not one of the finds of the month, but he's still super awesome with my big bin of toys that I found. There's a little battle beast in there too, and he's got his rub sign, so I didn't want to, didn't want to leave him out, so I love my battle beasts. Anyway, refocusing, back to my finds of the month. Um, let's see, we got that. And I also found this. This isn't a huge find of the month, but I think it is pretty cool uh, for 10 bucks. Got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Pizza Power board game. And this is complete. So that's cool. That, that artwork is amazing. It's like comic book style art. And it's really cool. Very neat. And one of my other best finds of the month. For He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, I found a complete Spider, and I think I paid 15 bucks for him, which I think is a good price, and uh, he works. Let's see if I got batteries in him still. I don't know if I do. Let me check. Mm -hmm. Let me get it open here. Uh, I don't have nails. I don't think there's batteries in him. But he does work. He does light up and everything and walk, so that's really cool. I mean, how awesome is this thing? Not necessarily hugely rare, but just so cool. So cool. Definitely one of my favorite things that I found for uh, January. And then my best finds of the month overall. And again, these are going to be uh, pickups from my buddy... Uh, Scott and his store in New Jersey uh, was a whole bunch of awesome Toxic Crusader stuff. So this, I already had the uh, the figure, but this is Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Kilimoff's helicopter. And I think the blade works. It might just be not totally connected in there, but you squeeze the trigger. And then the, uh, the helicopter blade is supposed to spin around, but I might have to play with that a little bit. It is missing some parts here or there, but overall really cool and you don't see a lot of the vehicles very often. I believe that was 10, but I did do a trade with him, so I think uh, with that and with this next vehicle came to maybe like 25 for the both, uh, the both of them. And then we got Toxie's, uh, I don't remember the name of this, but his like sewer skateboard. That could be the name for all I know. I don't really remember. It has the little pull cord on the back that uh, makes the the wheels wind up and spin and move forward. It has the stick shifter and the guns and everything. But just how cool does that look? Look at those amazing colors. Like, I absolutely love Toxic Crusaders. And that is just really, really cool. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And all right, guys, that is going to do it for my flea market and thrift store pickups for the month of January. Like I said, there is a ton more stuff that I could not possibly have time to sit here and go through everything with you guys. I wish I could, but I will put as many photos at the end of the video um, as I can for you guys to see. So definitely stick around till the end of the video and make sure you keep hitting those flea markets and thrift stores out there. Like I said, hit me up at 8 by Brian on Twitter and the King of Retro page on Facebook. Definitely show me what you guys are finding. And until next month, guys, happy hunting as always. Take care.
Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time!